Time for another stock review. This time we're looking at uh, Petrobras. Uh, interesting stock, this one. I'm going to give you a full breakdown of the stock, the balance sheet, the numbers, inside trading, who's buying, who's selling, the balance sheet, how much debt they've got. We're also going to look at the, uh, the website. We're going to look at the latest news of what the CEO has just reported. We're going to look at this one for the dividend payout. It promises a great dividend, but is it reliable? We're going to look at the back test, how it compares to the S&P 500, giving you the information that you can make an informed decision whether you should buy, sell the stock, hold the stock, what you should do. Remember, all my reviews are provided free of charge. No one sponsors me, pays me to do it. It's a free service. The um, uh, reviews and the software I use is free. My members can gain it for free. Uh, it's a service I provide to my members uh, as one of your perks. Um, it's honest. It's real. Using the most advanced algorithm algorithmic software. Uh, so other analysts are sponsored by the companies to report. I'm not, or paid by the company to report. I'm not. Uh, other analysts, uh, the information is biased. It's all based upon AI information, numbers, business, no sentiment, just the facts to give you the best information, whether you should buy it. In this video, I'm also going to give you the chance to win a hundred bucks in cash. You don't have to be a member. It's free to enter free for all. We're giving away a hundred bucks and some merchandise. Make sure that you tap the like button. It will help promote this video and share it out to more people. And we're live up to 10 hours a day. My aim is to be the most honest, real, live channel on YouTube TV. All right. With that said, this was uh, asked to be done by... Um a person called G. Corey has asked me to do this, one of my members. So let's get straight into it without further ado. If you want any of the links at all to uh, any of my uh, socials, if you want to follow me on X, know when I'm buying, when I'm selling, when I'm reviewing, when I'm doing anything at all, click above my head or down here. You'll find all the links above here and down here to win the money to get the social socials, the links to Alpha Spread, which is what I use, and everything else that you might need. Okay, let's go straight into the review and let's see what this company is. So what is it? Well, let's go straight into it. Uh, Sandis Rule, this is being made during a live video so my members can comment and they can be part of the video if they want to ask a question or subscribe or do a super chat because they like the reviews or whatever it might be. So anything can happen uh, during the making of this video. Anyway, what is Petrobras? Let's look at the uh, the chart here. It does very much look like an oil company, so it gives you a little bit of a clue there, a gas company, um, because it's uh, it's like like Chevron or uh, any of those. You 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 buy at the, when the when the price of oil is down, and then you trade on the way up, and that's how it works. I own some Chevron, so I'm getting used to that. Okay, so over the last uh, over the last well, the maximum period of time, we've seen uh, a 160% uh, rise. Over the last five years, we've seen a 24% rise. Uh, again, you can see it's an oil company uh, just by the way it um, trades from its line chart. Anyway, let's have a look. Um, Petrolio Brasileiro SA engages, can't, I didn't pronounce that right, I'm sure, uh, engages in oil and gas exploration, production and distribution act, uh, activities, operate through the following segments, exploration and production, uh, refining, transportation, marketing, gas, power, corporate and other businesses. The exploration and production segment uh, covers the activities of exploration, uh, development and production of crude oil, natural gas, liquid and natural gas for the primary purpose of supplying its domestic refineries. The refining, transportation and marketing segment uh, refers to refining logistics, transport and trading of crude oil and oil products uh, activity as well as exports of ethanol. Okay, we won't go through that. We can. I'll provide more links in a minute to the rest of the review um, uh, in information you'll need below in the description of this video. Been around since 1953. It's a Brazilian company in Rio de Janeiro, wonderful country, Brazil. Of course, uh, the, the, one of the best football teams in the world as well. Uh, anyway, Jean-Paul Terris uh, Prates. I hope I pronounced that correctly, is the CEO. I invite the CEO onto my show as I do uh, like to meet the CEOs and get your response to my reviews. 
If you bought this with margin, it's 25%. It's regarded as low risk uh, from the point of view of margin. If you were using borrowed money to buy it, it's going to be the lowest risk. 100% is the highest. Okay. Um, it's a market cap of 105.67 billion. High today, 1644. 52-week high, 1655. Uh, 52 week low is 927. So we've got some volatility here, but it's in a tight range. It's typical of this industry. Price earnings ratio 388. That sounds quite cheap for this sector. However, you need to compare that to the competition. Uh, and we'll show you what the competition is in a minute. But why you buy this one? Is for the earnings. The, sorry, the div. I beg your pardon. The dividend 17.51. Now, with a high dividend stock, you're not going to get massive growth. However, we've had some growth here, plus an exceptionally high dividend. Now then, that dividend only counts, though, if it always gets paid out and increases over time. This could be interesting for passive investment in your Roth IRA, not your brokerage account, Roth IRA or your ISA, where you can earn free uh, tax-free money. I wouldn't put the money straight back into the stock and buy on the high. I would have the dividend put in cash, wait for the dip, buy on the dip, hold the cash or put into something else or earn interest on your cash if you're not in margin. I'm in margin right now because I'm making more money on borrowing money than I am holding it at 5%. All right. So anyway, there's your dividend, but it only matters if it uh, still uh, makes sense overall with the stock trading and the stock is going down or sideways, is the dividend beneficial? Well, it depends how often it pays it out. It, do, it also depends if it continually increases it or it drops it. We'll discover that in a few moments when we go further into the review. Anyway, let's carry on going. Now, uh, Morningstar uh, give reviews. I don't uh, use these as uh, any any indication to buy the stock. They're biased. They're paid to say what people want them to say. I don't like it. It's not what I use. I do my own ana analysis, my own reviews. Um, but uh, this is what they're saying. 66% 66, 66 say buy. A hold is 26%. Uh, sell 6.7. The bulls are saying the large downstream losses of the past will not be repeated thanks to price policy revisions by the government and uh, divestment of refining capacity. Okay, the bears are saying the large shareholder payouts of the last two years will come to an end soon and the new government directs Petrobras to curtail dividends and increase investment. The government directs Petrobras. That's the key sentence there. The government directs Petrobras. Is there some government intervention here? Straight away, that's not good for me because politics gets in the way of good business. Don't like it. Don't like anything where a government has control. Do they have control? I don't know, but that's what the bears are saying. Uh, the government will stop the um, the uh, the high payouts. But again, we will look at the history in a few moments and see what we shall see. All right. Uh, the company makes money. You can see here. Um, now, you can see Wall Street are doing a pretty decent job overall with this one. This is uh, much, much easier to value, of course, because we all can follow the price of oil. Um, it's nothing too innovative about oil, of course, and crude oil and natural gas. Um, it kind of been the same for many, many years. So Wall Street, a, a, a lot better at analyzing this. It doesn't require any... Um, foresight, imagination. We're not talking about rockets. We're not talking about space. Uh, we're not talking about anything like AI where they have no idea where it's going. We know where oil's going. We can monitor the price of oil all the time. So as you can see, uh, its profits have been declining, um, but uh, it, uh, gets Wall Street get the expectations about right on this one. So who else is buying the stock? It's important to note because it will give us a sentiment for the stock. Petrobras, energy transfer. I know nothing about this one. Vale, know nothing about it. In fact, none of those I know anything about. I've not reviewed any of those stocks, so I can't say I've got no flipping idea. So I can't say what the stock is going to do because I don't have any experience of those. So I'm not going to say anything. 
All right, let me go over now to uh, the website and let's have a look at the website. What are we doing over here? What is it all about? Petrobras, uh, this is what it looks like. Um, not too much we want to look at it on the website. Uh, we also, oh, hang on a minute. We're also investing in uh, offshore wind. Okay, we like that. Petrobras receives Brazil OTC Award for Innovative Well Technology. I'm not a fan of awards. I think they're all manipulated. I don't believe any, any of that stuff. I just look at the numbers. Petrobras will install 11 new platforms in the pre-salt layer by 2027. Okay. And Petrobras makes its first purchase of carbon credits. Okay. Uh, what about uh, latest news around the stock from the website, from the investor's point of view? Petrobras signs a contract for the development and implementation of the innovative HICEP project in the Merrow field. Okay, that's just uh, come out a few days ago. All right. Um, I don't know much about that right now, but uh, that's just the headline and hopefully we'll discover more information on that in a few moments. Okay. Let's now go and look at the numbers. Uh, and then we're also going to do a full back test as well. We're going to show you in a couple of moments the, who's buying on the inside, who's selling on the inside, uh, their balance sheet, uh, their debt position, and all the rest of it. All right, smash the like button if you've not yet subscribed. Uh, please do. Stick to the end of the video, and you'll get a chance to win $100 in cash. All right, completely free. Now then, let's look at uh, the... Just briefly, and we'll come back to it in a few moments, the back test, how it performs to the S&P, and also we're going to look at the dividend payouts. All of that is coming up after we go through the numbers. <clears throat> okay, now here we go. First thing we want to look at is valuation. Best case scenario. We're not in a best case scenario. We have macro conditions. We have uh, high inflation. <clears throat> even though it's peaking or has peaked, 45% upside. The base case, though, is more likely. Now, 15% <clears throat> is like what I can get on the S&P 500 without any uh, real major issues with one particular sector. So it's undervalued, but not by a huge amount. Worst case scenario, it's overvalued by 8%. All right, okay. Do we have any uh, valuation traps here or any warnings? Um, possible, possible value trap detected. A value trap occurs when a stock appears inexpensive based on fundamental analysis, but fails to reach its intrinsic value over time. So what this means is it says, hey, look, the stock is under value, but it's not actually reached that value over time. So it's always important to know that that alone is not an indication. That's where Morningstar um, is leading you by going, oh, it's a buy and all the rest of it, when in fact it might not be a buy. Okay, that's why I do these reports and it's why I uh, base my investments on solid, solid information rather than headline grabbing or paid analyst reviews. Okay. That's why we do things differently here. All right. On the latest Q3 earnings, this is what they said. And we've picked up the information said in their reports. Pedrobus demonstrated remarkable resilience amidst market challenges, posting substantial growth with EBITDA of exploration surging by 25% and gas uh, and power by 49%. Despite external conditions affecting margins, investments increased significantly by 31% to uh, 9.1. This is Brazilian dollars, of course, Brazilian currency, uh, projecting an annual total uh, exceeding uh, what, 13 billion Brazilian. OK, the company has managed its debt well, stabilizing it at 61 billion and continued a share buyback program. Important. Very important. Targeting the uh, acquisition of up to 157 million preferred shares. Net income growth reflects solid performance with Brazilian 65.5 uh, billion returned to society in taxes and uh, dividends this quarter. Uh, 
Promising ventures in X include exploration projects in Colombia and a focus on strengthening investments for shareholder value and future resilience. Okay, let's have a look at the numbers. Revenue, well, as we can see, this is typically typical oil up and down a little bit of a wave there. We've got a nice uh, spike here through 21, 22. Now we're falling away again and expected revenue to fall away. Is this a time to buy? Well, we don't know yet. Um, revenue is falling. I like to buy at the bottom of a trend in this type of stock. So uh, if this continues, I'd be looking to buy around about here, over here. So not yet. Um, but we'll look, on, we'll look at the debt position and everything else and the margins and so on and so forth in a few moments. Intrinsic value wasn't accurate, so we can't use that. And without that, um, without that, there's uh, no buy from me without that information. Operating income has dropped by 11% and expected to fall. Net income uh, is dropped by 12% and expected to rise. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Expected to continue to fall. Okay, not good so far. Operating cash flow, minus 3%. That's going down. Capital expenditure is we're investing more again now. We just talked about it a moment ago. Buybacks to try to encourage investors to stay with them uh, and so on and so forth. Anyway, free cash flow, <coughs> negative 7%. 7 <coughs> that's going down as well. What about the balance sheet? What about the balance sheet? Right. One trillion. One trillion in assets. What about how much cash do we have? Cash and short-term investments, 67.1 billion. That's where the money's coming from to buy back the stock. Hence, the stock is moving up at the moment. So let's have a look. Um, and we can see it's gone up 1.82 this week, 10% this month, but the whole market has moved up. 13% over the last three months, 1.98 year to date. Obviously, we just started the year, 68% this year. And if the dividends are paying out at that rate with this growth, it's an absolute blinder at the moment. But let's see if that continues. Anyway, <clears throat> let's carry on looking down into it. We've got plenty of cash. Nearly all our assets is cash. So we're making money. We got, well, we don't know if we're making money yet. We'll look at that in a minute. We've got loads of cash. <clears throat> Liabilities out of 60% uh, of our assets, if you like, 639. So our liabilities aren't too great. That's okay. Long-term debt is, a, is about uh, a third uh, of that. Thereabouts, about a third of of our liabilities is uh, is long-term debt, but we're only about 60% of liability. So we're not, uh, so the balance sheet is healthy. That's what I'm saying. We don't have more liabilities than assets. We don't have, a, you know, 80, 90% of our assets. We're okay. And a third of that is long-term debt exploration and in, uh, and current uh, and uh, major capital expenditure would be part of that. And if interest rates start coming down, of course, that's a major catalyst for the stock. So if we look at it, long-term debt is actually 39%. It's a lot, but it's not out of control. I think the company can afford it with the amount of cash they got on the books. So I'm expecting, and I haven't seen it yet, I see it with you live for the first time, I'm expecting to see their solvency very, very good. The business isn't going bust. For me so far, what's important is are we going to continue getting these dividend payouts and the, and, and the same growth? That's what we're looking at. Anyway, let's, uh, let's scroll down and look at the margins. Margins are 47%. Now, I don't know if that's good without comparing it to the competition. I'm going to give you a link in a minute where you can do your own research and compare in your own time to the competition and see what their margins are. Because if their margins are higher than the company's under pressure from being squeezed and its moat can be reduced or what have you, margins look great, 47%, but I don't know what they are compared to the competition. 
47% gross margin, net margin 26%, operating margin 39%, and uh, just slightly decreasing recently, but uh, it's sort of holding, holding where it was before. Okay. ROE, 36%, uh, ROA, 14%, ROIC, 16 and ROCE, 25%. All right, there you go. Solvency, 59. Not the best, not even close to being the worst. This is good. The solvency is good, 59. It's because they have a certain amount of debt, but they have plenty of cash uh, as well. So their solvency is pretty good. 59 is good. It's just about to turn green. It's not red. It's amber going into green. At 60%, we're starting to go into green. So looking good. They're not going bust. You can invest in it and not be concerned that the company is going bust. Short-term solvency uh, is not good. Uh, in the short term, but uh, it or, or is, has got a cross against it. But that's why we're fifty nine percent. They are spending money. They are uh, investing at the minute. The cash flow is going down, and so on and so forth. But they've got plenty of cash. The debt will probably be reduced. Um, they've talked about it in the last earnings. They're paying back debt. They're buying back stock, and uh, with interest rates going down potentially an upside to this stock at the moment. Um, profitability score, 74%. Sounds great, right? The margins are good. They're making money. Very, very good. All of these uh, are ticks. Exceptional three-year average, positive free cash flow, exceptional three-year average, and positive operating income. Okay, all looking pretty good. Upside, uh, 35%. Uh, Average 3%. See, from where it is right now, uh, there's not that much upside. Wall Street's targets, even a downside. And the fact that we've had, um, that we don't have a full intrinsic value with uh, a, a, a trap detected because of, uh, of uh, never quite reaching those numbers, I think from here it can only go down. But I think we had a good rally, but I think we can go down from here. Anyway, let's move on down and look at the competition. Now, I'm a Chevron investor. I own Chevron. I think Chevron's a better value. Uh, that's why I own Chevron looking at this. But again, go and do your research. I'll give you the link at the end and you can compare the balance sheets, the fundamentals to others, and you can uh, compare. I'll give you full access to all of these links and you can go and check it out and you can decide which is the best value. If you're going to buy Prestrobus, you could buy Exxon or Chevron. I've got Chevron or maybe Shell and you could decide what's right for you. I am a Chevron investor. Okay, now then, uh, shorts, nothing, nothing detectable uh, on the short side of things. That's good. Okay, remember I said it's all downhill from here, in my opinion. We're now trimming off the top. I think it's now overbought, but then that's just my opinion. Uh, but that's what I think about it. I wouldn't be buying it here. Anyway, certainly not. Uh, anyway, sentiment on the stock over the last uh, 90 days. Let's have a look. The sentiment of the stock. The last 90 days, 64% good. Hardly any negative information, just 9%. Last 30 days, uh, it's neutral news, 8% now negative. Last seven days, there it goes. It's expanding now at 16%. And today, uh, n just, just good news. So uh, sentiment of the stock is now turning more negative. I think it's had its little rally. I think it will sell off a little bit. But anyway, what's important is what we haven't touched yet. What's important is this dividend we're talking about, all right? Let's have a look at this. So we're going to go back now, start off with 2012. Um, 2012. Now, we like to look at dividend kings like Coca-Cola, J&J. Consistently increasing dividends, consistently paying out. It gives you uh, more confidence to invest long-term in the stock. 2012, 12 cents, then 19 cents, then back at 12, then 48, then two, then two, then five. So they're paying out. However, they are inconsistent. So you can't rely on this as a, uh, as a, as a, as a, as an income. It's up, it's down, it's in, it's out. Now we're jumping up. We're still pay we're paying out every ev every time though. Now we've jumped to 29, 61, 76, but then we go back to 36. And then we're up to 117. So you can see what I'm saying. We're all over the place. Somebody liked that. Look, they thought, oh, I like that. 117, a good dividend payout there. 
but it's uh, it's very inconsistent. So even though it's advertising on its uh, on its portfolio that it's got this seventeen percent, it uh, it's not always the case. One hundred and seventeen went down to fifty six, then seventy three, then fourteen. Then jumped to 129, 113, 16 um, um, in 22, 44, 61, 19, 2, 5. Now then, 119, um, 50, 26, 31, 14, 27. And now this is going forward, what we're expecting uh, later on. All right, February 24, we're expecting um, 17 cents. So you can see from the point of view of a dividend, it's up and down like a flipping yo-yo. So I don't like that. You don't know what you're going to get. Um, it's paid out every time, which is good, but it's unreliable. One minute you're up, next minute you're down. Uh, this is why I'm a why I like Chevron. Um, very very different structure. Good dividend, much more reliable. This is very very up and down, uh, all over the place. And now we're talking about government intervention to reduce that. I don't know much about that yet, but we just heard that little bit of information there earlier. Let's go and compare it now to the S and P over since 2011. If you bought $10,000 worth of the S&P, you've now got 48,000 measured in blue. If you bought $10,000 worth of um, uh, Petrobras, you've now got $11,000. And that includes investing, reinvesting the dividends. So you're better off with the S&P. So it's quite clear to me to say that it's not a buy from me. It's not a buy from me because the dividend is unreliable. We've got this conversation about um, government intervention to try to reduce that. We've got, you can outperform it, you can outperform it by the S&P anyway, so you can make more money. Uh, other oil companies will probably give you a better deal. Um, so for me, it's not a buy. Let's go back now to my final thoughts on this one. Now, if you've watched to the end of the video, I did say I would give you a chance to win yourself uh, $100 in cash, which uh, I'm going to do right now. So, first of all, if you've not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure that you've done that and smash the like button. But uh, if you click above my head and down here in the links, you'll find the links to our competition. We're giving away 100 bucks in cash. It's free to enter, free for all. We're just giving it away just because we like helping people, right? It's what we do. Um, also, you'll find the link to um, my um, alpha spread if you want to go to alpha spread and review the stock like I have just done using, using the most advanced algorithmic software you can. Also, you can uh, do more research uh, and you can look at the, the competition to see how it compares to the competition. It's not a buy for me uh, overall for all the reasons I've given. Uh, also, you'll find all the links to my socials and, and, and everything above here and down here where I post my um, information in the description and uh, above my head on the little eye, little, the little eye if you click the information. Uh, you'll see my X account and my newsletter. I, I post information before I trade what I'm buying, what, what I'm selling before I do it. So you can get an informed decision of what, uh, of what the direction of the stock is. Over here, you'll see the full review. I've done nearly, I think, over now 40 uh, different companies reviews. They're all on alpha spread over here. And down here, you'll see my uh, full list of my uh, Meet the CEO series when I interview uh, the CEOs from the company. All right, there you go. This was provided uh, as a free service for one of my members. You too can have a, 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 a review like this if you request it. Until next time, as always, take care of yourselves and each other.